Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a review on a Nishan A. Now, Nishan A is a Turkish house and um, their logo actually looks like a man riding on the horseback, sort of shooting uh, backwards, riding forward with the bow and arrow. Great little um, homage to Turkish history, if you will. But um, this is a house that I have not done very many videos on the channel about. I've actually only done one, I believe, and it's a fragrance called Nefs. And Nefs, I have a review on if you want to check that out. It's a very popular Nishan A fragrance created by Christian Carbonell, a.k.a. Chris Maurice. He's the guy that has multiple names. Um, and it's actually a pretty good Middle Eastern style fragrance that has some booziness to it. You can go check out my review on it. I didn't like it enough to buy a bottle, but I did enjoy it. And Nishan A is one of those house that um, I think many people in the community disagree about. There are people who absolutely love the house of Nishan A, and there are people that despise the house of Nishan A. Um, and I'm somewhat in the middle. Some of their fragrances I can completely see not liking, but some of them I really do like. And this is um, one of the fragrances that actually fall on the like side of the argument here. This fragrance actually gets, maybe it's one of the most, um, I would say, uh, divisive Nishane fragrances because it really tends to divide people. There are people that hate it. There are people that really love it. And this is Nishane's Sultan Vetiver. Now, uh, I have to say thank you to my good friend Rich Mitch for this bottle. This is usually retailing. Here's the packaging, by the way. Um, this usually retails for uh, $205 dollars for 50 mils that's retail but i ended up getting this for just a little bit over 100 brand new from rich mitch he had a backup and he was selling some of his collection and i got this at a little bit of a steal and i and i'm actually really glad to have a bottle of this because i do think this is one of the better vetiver fragrances created in the last decade or so so um like i said not very much talk on the house of of nishan a uh on the channel but uh, we're gonna review Sultan Vetiver today. And um, this is a fragrance that, uh, like I said, it's very divisive. So um, let me show you sort of the picture that Nishan A feels uh, is a good snapshot of what Sultan Vetiver sort of gives you, if you will. And so, by the way, while I'm pulling this picture out, they all come, all Nishan A's sort of come with this little postcard, if you will, with a picture of the fragrance. And this is how they view it. So Sultan Vetiver, and there is sort of the little postcard. And you can see it's like a little bit of a town, almost maybe a little bit of a castle for a sultan, I guess you could say. And you can see sort of the greenery all around the the um, outside of, of the castle walls, if you will. And that greenery is actually a really important image um, because obviously this is a Vetiver fragrance, hence the name Sultan Vetiver, we're going to talk a little bit about sort of the, the pros and cons, if you will, with Sultan Vetiver. But um, first thing to mention is, like I said, if you go to Fragrantica, there, even right now, if you go to Fragrantica, which I almost never go to Fragrantica, but I did just because I wanted to see if the argument was still raging about this fragrance, and it is. So if you actually go to Fragrantica right now, I think the second or the third comment from the top, and by the way, this is... Um, you know, Wednesday, August 30th, 2023. So if you're watching this video later on, um, you might have to go back and, and look at some of the old uh, uh, the old um, comments on Fragrantica. But one of the things that you'll notice is instantly there's somebody saying, you people saying that Nishane Sultan Vetiver is the best Vetiver fragrance ever are crazy. The best fragrance, it has nothing on stuff like Guerlain's Vetiver and, you know, and all that stuff. And that is true. I will tell you that right now. I am not going to stand up here and say Nishan A Sultan Vetiver can hold a candle to the greatest vetiver of all time, which is Guerlain's Vetiver, the original from 1959 by Jean-Paul Guerlain. Not going to say that at all, okay? Not that crazy. But my argument is, is that within the last year or so, which by the way, Nishan A as a label was only founded in 2012. So the fragrance house is only 11 years old, but as a, um, as a fragrance house that sort of bloomed out of this older, it was actually the owner owned like a book publishing company. He used to distribute these high quality illustrated books, I guess, hence the um, little postcards that come in there. 
Um, and he ended up wanting to create this uh, um, graceful, beautiful sort of um, house that would pay homage to Turkish history, but also, you know, use his cultural and business experience and stuff like that. So they founded Nishane. That's kind of a little bit of the backstory. But um, so whenever I'm talking about Nishane's Sultan Vetiver, what people are arguing about, the biggest argument, and I would say the biggest divisive issue about Sultan Vetiver in 2023 is the Amber Woods. So, and this Middle Eastern style of perfumery, because Nishane being a Turkish house, they do have this Middle Eastern take on perfumery. Uh, and I only own a couple other Nishane fragrances. So I own Ani, which I'll do a review on one of these days. And I own Fan Your Flames. Those are the only, these three are the only full bottles I have. I do have a sample, I think, of Wulan Cha, maybe a couple other Nishanes, but um, other than that, it's a house that, you know, I'm not super enamored with, but the biggest argument, one half of the population hates amber woods, and if there's an amber wood in there, it's out, right? And, and there are some people that are extremely sensitive to amber woods. Luckily, I am, I am not one of those people. I have been uh, blessed with the ability to enjoy a fragrance that does have some amber woods, and I really think it's all how it's used. But if you go look at the arguments on Fragrantica, there are people that are basically saying that this fragrance, because of the style, right? Because nowadays, it's almost turned into a little bit of a chic-type fragrance if it's soft and understated, right? They start, many people consider that fine French elegant perfumery if it's soft and understated. If it's loud and screaming, and, you know, it, it's like a bullhorn. They consider that to be maybe a little bit low, lower brow, below the belt, low, lower class, if you will, right? Anyone that needs their fragrance to scream across the room, it's seen as almost like, um, you know, almost like, um, you know how old money looks at new money with sort of like their nose in the air and new money is always flashing it, right? Old money doesn't need to flash. That's sort of the comparison I make to big fragrances that you know, are like a foghorn, like a bullhorn, right? One thing I should say about Nishane, and, and I think it's true for all of their fragrances, I'm not 100% sure, but they are in X-ray, the parfums. All of them are X-ray, okay? So if you know anything about, you know, the differences between EDT, EDP, X-ray, all that good stuff, the higher the oil concentration um, as you go up, the longer it lasts. So X-Ray is sort of one of the highest oil perfume oil concentrations. So this fragrance lasts forever. I mean, literally a day. I think this fragrance will last like 15, 18 hours on my skin. Um, and it's an X-Ray. So it's supposed to last a very long time. But because it's an X-Ray, it doesn't shout. I don't think this fragrance reaches across the room and, and really grabs people, right? So um, to, to recap, I think the beef here. I'm not comparing this with, I don't want anyone to think I'm comparing this with the all-time great vetivers. I do have some vetiver uh, videos you can go check out. My This Is Not A Top 10 Vetiver. I also did um, Top 10 or I think it was something like um, vetiver fragrances that said the name vetiver on the tin. So we talked about things like Roja's uh, vetiver, which is one of the most expensive vetivers money can buy. Um, we talked about, of course, Guerlain's Vetiver, and so I'm going to review all of these, Guerlain's Vetiver Extreme. I have a lot of experience with Vetiver, even things like, um, Ancre Noir, the inky, dark, brooding type Vetiver. Um, and so, one thing that, uh, I just wanted to sort of really set the record straight, because I don't want anyone to think that I'm up here saying that this is the greatest Vetiver fragrance of all time. No, it's not but I do think it's a very good creation. So let me tell you what I get from it and the way that it sort of breaks down on my skin. And, and, and I've had a couple people send me some decants and actually some pretty good size ones too. You, this one I actually bought with my own money before I was able to secure um, the full bottle from Rich Mitch. So this actually I purchased with my own money and you can see the dent that I put in this. I've probably gone through seven or eight mils. And this one right here was sent to me by a friend in the community and I completely drained it. So I have been uh, wearing Nishane Sultan Vetiver for, I've probably given it a good six or seven wears, full wears out, out of that, out of the decants and also um, from the bottle, sprayed from the bottle to make sure everything was good with the bottle, which it is. It, it was absolutely perfect. It was actually sealed when I got it. So um, so here's sort of the, the breakdown. 
When you spray Nishane Sultan Vetiver, you'll notice that this is a grand fragrance. This is a fragrance made for a Sultan. Remember, this is a fragrance made for a ruler, right? And this is a very, um, I would say this is a uh, man that is well put together and very confident in who he is and takes command. This is a man that likes to take charge. And I say man because historically, Vetiver has been a traditionally masculine note, okay? Also, one thing that I should mention about Vetiver is that uh, it is one of the most used notes in perfumery. So there was a study done, or I can't remember how I came across this factoid, but Euro Rose gave it to me where he said the number one uh, ingredient from some of the all-time great perfumers, there were some perfumers who tracked what they used in the formulas and stuff like that, vetiver acetate was actually the number one used ingredient. So it's a very common ingredient to be used in a fragrance composition, but historically vetiver has sort of been associated with traditional masculinity and probably stuff like Guerlain's vetiver from 1959 has a lot to do with it. Now this has other notes in there as well. This has that tobacco, which is just a brilliant mixture um, that uh, Jean-Paul Guerlain came up with. But um, one thing that you'll notice about Nishane's Sultan Vetiver from the, from the get-go, okay, is that it is a big, grand fragrance made, made for sort of a very confident, like I said, somebody who's in charge. That, that's the aura that it gives to me. And one of the reasons why this is supposed to be Sultan Vetiver is because it actually uses four different types of vetiver. And we'll go through those four different types of vetiver here um, later on in the review. But... There are four different types of vetiver, and um, so those four different types of vetiver add a lot of complexity to the fragrance. So whenever you are um, looking at some of these other vetiver fragrances that I discussed, so for example, take something like Guerlain's vetiver, right? I mentioned the tobacco in the base, but um, there's also, when, when this, at least out of this bottle, this is an early 2000... I think this is an early 2000s bottle, if I'm not mistaken. Um, UB, I think it's a 0R6 is the batch code on this one. I think it's early 2000s. But when this opens up, it opens up extremely green. And um, very grassy green, like beautiful spring. You think about the butterflies sort of flying, the birds singing, sunny day, grass is green, well watered. Not like now in Texas where everything's sort of dry. Think about a very green, lush, plush bright summer day, right? And that's the vibe that fresh vetiver fragrances give you in the opening. Another example of a brilliant um, fresh vetiver, I would say, is Creed's original vetiver. This is a uh, perfect, fresh, warm, summery type vetiver. It's very green. And um, much of the earthier, rootier, inky, darker elements of vetiver are removed from these type of vetiver creations. So if you think about something like Ancre Noir, right? With a very inky, dark, brooding type smell um, mixed with cypress. Uh, that type of earthy darkness of vetiver is sort of removed and in the, in the fresher parts of, of the vetiver are actually used in fragrances like Original Vetiver. Um, and there's also sort of the, there is also the peppery, spicy, earthy side of, of vetiver as well. So uh, Frederick Mall's Vetiver Extraordinaire does a good job of that. So does uh, Vetiver Extreme, right? A little bit of that oily earthiness to it. Um, and so what I really like about Nishane Sultan Vetiver is that the four types of vetiver sort of combine, they blend in a way where... Um, it gives you many, not all, but many of the different aspects of the vetiver plant. And I do have some pretty ex extensive experience with vetiver, thanks to friends in the community. Um, I think it was Ajay, he sent me this uh, traditional Ruchas, which um, is just so deep and rich. This could almost be a fragrance in and of itself. What it smells like to me, well, it is a fragrance in and of itself. It's, it's Ruchas, people actually wear this. But um, this traditional Indian vetiver atar style is, I would say, it really smells like you're taking different types of green vetivers and like putting them into a blender, like in your kitchen, right? You're putting them into a blender, you're blending it all up, and you sort of get this beautiful blend. Um, and you get 
parts of the earthiness, the inkiness, the you get all of these different blends. And while it's nowhere near as, as natural smelling in, in um, Sultan Vetiver, it's nowhere near as natural smelling as the actual Ruhas. Uh, there, there is this uh, feeling of getting to smell lots of different bits and pieces of the vetiver plant, okay? So it doesn't feel like it was just sort of haphazardly thrown together. Um, you know, if you just imagine in your mind, okay, the vetiver being harvested. And remember, when vetiver is used, they don't use the grassy top part. They use the rooty, the, the roots. So the essential oil actually comes from the vetiver roots. And um, just imagine sort of these uh, vetiver plants, these, these fields of vetiver just being harvested. And imagine, imagine just sort of the earthiness as the vetiver is pulled from the ground, right? And just imagine like when, you, when it's being pulled, imagine coming, some of the earth sort of coming up with it, right? And that'll get you in the ballpark of a little bit of what the opening of Nishane's Sultan Vetiver uh, feels like. Now, the other part, and um, one thing that has to be mentioned when we're talking about a vetiver perfume, is that one of the hardest things about working with vetiver, at least in my opinion, one of the hardest things about working with vetiver is that if you go over a certain percentage of vetiver in a, in a composition, it really will start to turn into a vetiver fragrance, right? And so it's a, it's a note that can overtake a composition so there could be all of these interesting and, and um, amazing transitions and notes and that are in the background, but if you put too much vetiver in a fragrance, it very quickly just becomes a vetiver composition. And one of the things that I've heard many people in the community complain about, and you know, with every criticism, I would say there is some uh, nugget of truth in there, is that many vetiver fragrances overlap. They may not necessarily smell exactly the same, but they overlap. So I've heard this criticism used. This is um, Christian Dior's Vetiver, right? A very expensive um, from the Dior Privé line, right? Uh, and I'll review this thanks to, um, I think it was Jeff who sent me this decant. Thank you. So um, this is Vetiver in coffee. But many people smell this and they say, it's just a Vetiver fragrance. You know, what's so special about it? And it's the same thing with expensive fragrances like Crete. It's just a Vetiver fragrance, you know? Um, and that's what happens whenever you end up using a lot of vetiver, is it has a way of, of smelling very familiar. And yet, for the true vetiver lovers, I would say for the vetiver connoisseurs, for the people who love vetiver, right? For the ones who say, it's my favorite note of all time, you can pick out those complexities. You can pick out sort of the citrusy, fresher side of something like original vetiver. Um, you know, you can, you can pick out the spicy, more, more peppery aspect of Vetiver Extreme. And, and you can, you can pick out all of these different little bits and pieces of the Vetiver. It doesn't just feel like you're painting in one color of green. There is overlap, but there's complexity as well underneath, right? And that's one of the hardest things of working with Vetiver to me is addressing that criticism, making it unique, right? but still presenting a vetiver in a way where it smells natural, where vetiver lovers will love it, and um, it doesn't just overtake the fragrance, and it doesn't just feel like you're smelling some sort of boiled celery or boiled cabbage or something like that, right? It doesn't have that sort of um, swampy feeling, as Persole says. I've heard Persole's describe vetiver as swampy before, and so it doesn't have that, um, and it, it sort of... Um, will keep the people who love vetiver happy, but interest people who maybe are lukewarm to vetiver. Because the reality of the situation is that when I first started my fragrance journey, vetiver is a note that I don't think anyone who goes into their fragrance journey will instantly just fall in love with, or very few people, I would say. Usually it's a note that has to grow on you. Like you smell it and you're like, ah, oh, you know, okay. But then you end up sort of coming back to it. And um, you, you end up sort of falling in love with it as your nose matures and as, as time goes on, right? So, um, and, and to make matters even harder on the people who really love vetiver, many people don't know this, but um, I think the main vetiver supplier to the world where most of the, the big uh, luxury houses use is Haitian vetiver. And Haitian vetiver is actually controlled by the gangs, the Haitian gangs control the vetiver trade. 
Um, and so it, it can be a dangerous, you know, world of getting materials from these houses. And they're planting them in other parts of the world to try to, you know, uh, break the grip of, let's say, the Haitian gangs. But believe it or not, it's that lucrative that the gangs actually control the, the, the vetiver trade. So this does use the more common Haitian vetiver, but it also has bourbon vetiver, which is almost like the Rolls Royce of vetiver. Bourbon vetiver is sort of the top of the line, right? It's the extremely expensive, sought after vetiver. There is Javanese vetiver, a vetiver from Java. And there's also um, Brazilian vetiver in here, which I think that is maybe one of the uh, rarest vetivers. I don't see Brazilian vetiver used very often. Um, I think there's maybe a handful of fragrances in my collection that have that Brazilian vetiver note, and that's it. Maybe just a couple. It's it's not a it's not a vetiver that's used very often, and I'm not really very familiar with it to be honest with you. But those are the four types of vetiver that are used in this composition. So. What happens in the opening, and like I said, it's very complex. This is a complex fragrance. Um, and so what you get is in the opening to kick things off, it opens up very fresh. And what, what you smell is you smell absinthe, and it smells very green. It adds this additional greenness to the fragrance. I think the absinthe note is actually uh, a pretty brilliant uh, stroke here. And uh, there's this fresh greenness to the vetiver when you first spray. So the opening of the fragrance is extremely fresh and citrusy. And you get those citruses for about 5, 10, 15 minutes. Sparkling bergamot, right? Um, it is a extremely bright, uplifting type of opening. And citrus freshness is aided by a note called neroli. And neroli is actually a very expensive note when used in, uh, when, when high quality neroli is used. And so imagine sort of um, fusing like this bitter citrus orange because um, neroli and orange blossom, I believe, come from the same uh, come from the same tree. And um, so imagine like fusing this bitter citrus smell, bitter orangey citrus smell, with sort of this beautiful white floral. That's the way that I would describe the the neroli in. Um, Nishane Sultan Vetiver. Some Neroli can come across as smelling somewhat soapy as well. This one doesn't. This one does not smell soapy to me. It's um, the soapy qualities are sort of turned down. But what you end up getting is you get something that starts to come across as smelling slightly honeyed, almost like a honeyed spice. Okay, so imagine that honey spice underlying that honey spice in the opening. You'll start to notice the smokiness start to come forward. So as the citruses start to sort of fizz off and start to, um, the sparkliness starts to, you know, fade, almost like you poured um, some champagne and the bubbles are all going crazy and as it sits in your glass, they're slowly started coming down. That's how the citrus opening feels here. Sort of the, um, the sparkliness starts to recede and as it recedes, the smoke comes up. And that smoke, whenever it appears, the smoke feels like it's almost like on the back burner but the back burner is turned to like a slow simmer, okay? It's not on high, it's not even on medium, it's a slow simmer in the background. And what you're gonna notice with Nishane Sultan Vetiver is as the hours go by, that uh, slow simmer in the background starts to sort of heat up a little bit. And the smoky vetiver, the smokiness of the vetiver, which I believe may come from the Java vetiver, I'm not 100% sure, but it really feels like within the first hour or two, that smokiness sort of starts to make its way from the background and just slowly starts to enter the picture more and more and more. And so more of the smoky vetiver comes to your nose, a little bit less of that green, heavy, um, bright day vetiver that I was telling you about in something like your lawns vetiver, right? That's what you get in the opening with, with Nishane Sultan Vetiver, that bright greens, and it's, and it's amplified by the neroli and the citruses and the green absinthe. The green absinthe, I think, is one of the uh, master strokes in the opening because it really makes you think about the green fields I was mentioning earlier with um, Guerlain's Vetiver. And as the hours go by, more of the smokiness is going to come to your nose and more of the spiciness is going to come to your nose. There is a little bit of tonka bean and amber as well. And so 
If you're a vetiver lover, one thing that you're going to notice in, is that you will be sold on the opening of Sultan Vetiver because it really does feel like a vetiver um, heavy composition because it obviously is. It does exactly what it says on, on the tin. It's a vetiver heavy fragrance, but it smells different from so many of the other vetiver fragrances that I've discussed. And if you want sort of a full breakdown, I actually did a This Is Not A Top 10 Vetiver and it was a ranked top 100. So you can go check that video out. If you put in, this is not a top 10 vetiver in, in YouTube, you'll find it. Um, and um, I ended up ranking the top 100 vetivers. Uh, and so there were some in there that were not super vetiver heavy, but uh, as, as we, I sort of ranked them heavier and heavier vetiver, if you will. Um, but uh, so you can really get a feel for just how many fragrances have that vetiver note. And so here it does exactly what it says. It'll make the vetiver lovers happy, but it does it in a way that's very different to what you've smelled in, in other vetiver perfumes. And I think that woody sort of, um, excuse me, woody smoky elements of the vetiver sort of increase as the fragrance continues to dry because vetiver can give off a little bit of a woody aspect as well. And that woodiness, even though there's no woody notes used. So like, for example, in uh, Ancre Noir, Natalie Lorson decided to use the note of Cypress, which I think is a brilliant note uh, combination. And um, so that Cypress note at increased the woodiness even more. Here, they didn't use any woody notes, but the vetiver they used starts to smell more woody as the hours go by, if that makes sense. And... Um, so the woody spicy elements increase as the fragrance continues to dry and what ends up happening and remember I said there's a little bit of tonka bean and a little bit of amber in this fragrance and so what ends up happening is once you get to about the hour hour and a half mark you're going to notice there's something that starts to smell sort of ambery slash labdanum now there's no labdanum listed in this composition but Labdanum can sometimes come across as leathery. And I think there's multiple layers to, I know there's multiple layers to this fragrance, but I think there's multiple layers, not just to the vetiver, but also to the leather smell that your nose sort of perceives. Because when you're wearing the fragrance initially, leather is in the base, okay? So technically you would expect the leather to come out four or five hours in. You get it much earlier. Within the first hour, you're gonna be smelling that leather note but it almost smells like a leathery amber at first. It almost smells like there's this labdanum bit which can have this smoky, leathery uh, feel. And I think that they've used a little bit of labdanum, not like a pure labdanum heavy fragrance. Like if you want a real uh, labdanum heavy fragrance, check out something like uh, Le Leon or Sahara Noir. Actually, I just reviewed, um, what was it called? Ladano Nero by uh, Tiziana Terenzi. You can go check out my review of that if you want a review of a of a true labdanum heavy fragrance. But um, this I think just uses it to sort of keep that leathery profile. Uh, you know, even though it's like this and there's steps and layers to the fragrance, the, the way that they've blended the vetivers and the way that they've blended sort of that ambery labdanum with the leather in the base, I think makes it feel much, uh, it flows much better than it would otherwise. It's not a clunky fragrance. And um, so as the fragrance continues to dry, I think this sort of shiny, I was thinking of a way to describe it. And I honestly think shiny is a good word. This shiny vetiver tends to come out. Like imagine you're looking at a shiny piece of jewelry. Well, I mean, my ring isn't shiny anymore because I've been wearing it forever. But um, just imagine like a brand new shiny piece of jewelry. That's what the vetiver starts to feel like in the composition, um, especially in the mid. So the, the, and I've got about a five hour dry down right here. So in the mid, uh, it's bourbon vetiver and Haitian vetiver. And those two vetivers, remember bourbon vetiver is the very high quality expensive vetiver. So the bourbon vetiver in the mid really starts to give off that sort of shiny, um, sparkling sort of, um, it takes over the composition. And as the hours tick by, once, once you get to the once you get to that three to four hour mark, I would say, that's where I think maybe the most decisive split in this fragrance is going to come because I really feel like that's where the amber woods and the base start to change the composition of the perfume. 
So when you smell it in the first, you know, couple hours here, you're going to get everything I talked about with the green absinthe and all that stuff, the sparkly bergamot, the neroli, all the difference, all the different layers in complexity. Once you get to about hour three or four, I think that is the point in time where you're going to decide you love this fragrance or you hate it because that's when the amber woods are going to really make their appearance. I think they've always sort of been there hanging really keeping everything together like glue. That's one of the reasons I think this fragrance is so strong is because there are some amber woods. Now, um, the downside for people who obviously hate amber woods is that, you know, amber woods can sometimes be piercing, droning, yawning, whatever you want to call it, right? There can be this long drawn out amber wood accord that some people hate. And I would argue that there are fragrances that don't have the complexity of Sultan Vetiver, that they don't have the ingredients of Sultan Vetiver because the ingredients in here smell high quality to me. They absolutely do. Um, they do not have the, um, uh, they don't have the uh, complexity and the ingredients of Sultan Vetiver. So they use, I think, amber woods as almost like a band-aid, as a patch, right? And what they do is, is lazy perfumers or perfumers that maybe don't have the budget and they need to, or, or maybe that's just the style and they think it's cool nowadays, is they will use amber woods to sort of make up the deficiency in the fragrance, right? So amber woods are almost like the plug, all right? They plug holes, right? And, um, and when amber woods are used that way, I obviously don't like it here, uh, once you get to that three or four hour mark and the amber woods really start to come out, they don't hide the lack of complexity. Actually, what they end up doing to me, Nishane used amber woods in the base, I think, to complement the rest of the composition, uh, especially the quality of the vetiver and all of this stuff that they did. Amber wood enhanced it to me because it allowed it to, to that smell to sort of continue on, especially into the base. When, um, and vetiver is also a very long lasting note, by the way. So I, I don't want to give the impression that the vetiver just sort of flies off and all you're left with is amber woods. I don't think that's the case at all. But I do think they used amber woods to sort of give it a modern feel. Because remember, we're talking 1959 when Guerlain's vetiver came out. And vetiver can be seen as an old man note by some people. Some people consider vetiver old man, old man-ish, right? Uh, and so what Nishane did is they modernized it and they did use some amber woods in the base, but they also used leather. And so now the rest of the leather is going to sort of come to the front with the amber woods. And luckily, I like this smell and, and I like um, Nishane's Sultan Vetiver the whole ride through. I have no problem with it. There's never a point in my time in, in the journey of Nishane's Sultan Vetiver where I would look at this and say that you know, this is anything like unique luxuries creations or the ones where they just use amber woods, just bam, am, here's an amber wood accord, that'll be $300, please. No, this is not that. There's complexity, there's depth, there's transitions, um, there's different types of vetiver. It shows the different facets of the vetiver plant, uh, you know, the, the oil. I think that this is a, a brilliant composition that does deserve some love in the community. I know there are some folks who will agree with me, and I also know there are some folks who will disagree with me, but that's sort of my argument on Sultan Vetiver. Now, luckily, um, I have some other Vetiver fragrances I will be talking about. The House of Sherwood has a Vetiver fragrance that I'm very excited to get to know. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow. Maybe I'll even do an early impression on it tomorrow while Vetiver's fresh in my mind. But um, So there are other Vetivers that I'm very hopeful for and excited about. But um, this is sort of one of those vetivers that I do think deserves some love. Is it a Sultan vetiver? Is it a ruler's vetiver? I mean, it's pretty damn close. I think they did a really good job of this. Um, I'm glad to have a bottle. Um, and, and so, yes, Nishan A's Sultan vetiver. That's sort of my take. If you have experience on it, do let me know. Let me know what you think about my whole Amber Woods hypotheses, if you will. Uh, let me know what you think about the four different types of vetiver in here. If you're a vetiver lover, you probably know all about this already, but um, I felt like it was time to sort of put my two cents in. So, hope everyone enjoyed the video. Do leave a comment below. Cheers, guys, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.